I mean, now, now you say, oh, you confuse me now. No, God wants to test your heart. Amen. It's not the church. Amen. Church has nothing to do with it except take your money, put it into the kingdom. And, and what I mean by kingdom, I'm talking about the church building and take care of things there. But that's all that is. It's exchange. Y'all understand that, right? Amen. It is what it is. Amen. But God doesn't need your money. I mean, if God needed our money, he said, oh, man, I ain't do nothing on the earth until these people start giving. That sounds like a broke preacher. Amen. <laughs> Let me leave that low. Let me move past that. <laughs> no, that look like a person that's struggling. You understand? God is not doing that. What it is, God is testing our hearts, and he's saying, uh, give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together. But what is he talking about? Because he's not talking about money there. Let's go there. Let's, I, I'm preaching because I've got time. Let's go to Mark chapter 7. Mark chapter, no, Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7. Yeah, I'm going Matthew first though. Thank you. Is that okay? Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Go to, go to, <laughs> y'all leave him alone. Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7. All right. Amen. Now, when you go to Matthew chapter 7, look at verse 1. Look at verse 1. Now, he's dealing with something. He says, judge not that you not be judged. Verse 2 says, for with the judgment you judge, you will be judged. And with the measure you use it, it will be measured back to you. It will what? Be measured back to you. Now, go over to now Luke 6, 37. 37. Thank you. Thank you. You're going to get there. You're, you're all right. Leave him alone. <laughs> he tried. All right. <laughs> Luke 37. All right. Are you there? Ready? Now read. Judge not, and you shall not be judged. For with the same measure, verse 38, that you use it, it will be measured back to you. Now I'm going to read it in its whole entirety now. Verse 37. Judge not, and you shall not be judged. Condemn not, and you shall not be condemned. Forgive, and you will what? Be forgiven. Now verse 38. Give, and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be put into your bosom. For with the same measure that you use it, it will be measured back to you. So now, what is the simulation in these verses? And the reason why I read a couple of them is because I wanted to show you in the verse, he's dealing with what? Forgiveness. He's dealing with your heart. He's dealing with forgiveness. He's dealing with condemnation. He's dealing with also to uh, 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 judgment, right? So all of those things are of the heart, of the heart. The Bible says, uh, when it talks about judging, judging men, it says, let no man judge you or judge no man. But the Father in heaven will judge or the work of that person will judge. Then he says, forgive. So all of this is dealing with the heart. But why would God, in all of this dealing with forgiveness, condemnation, and, 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 and talking about really the heart issue, why would he put in there give? Why would he say give? Why would he put give in the midst of all of that talking about a heart condition? I believe this is the reason why. I believe that our heart will determine how we give. I, I really do. I think, I think right now that that's what it is. I think he's dealing with that. And, and not only that, giving is the middle, watch, in the middle of the scripture, is about the attitude of the heart. Whatever we give, more is given back to us. Say that, more is given back to us. If we give more, it's given back to us, right? Now, <laughs> I had a situation one time, not a situation, I was really at church and I was praying, and I was, you know, praying for this couple, uh, a man and, and a wife, and, and uh, of course, uh, I went by and I was laying hands on people and praying, and, and I went up to them, and I usually ask people, you know, I cut off my mic, I ask them, says, what do you want me to pray for? You know, what would you have me to pray for? And uh, the, the young lady, she was there, and she said, ah, man of God, I want you to pray that my husband start listening to me. And I thought about it for a moment, I said, I don't know how to pray that prayer, huh? So, so, I, so, I, so I left her alone, went down here. Y'all see me do that. I go leave her. I went, somebody else start praying for them. I, and I'll wait on that. I, I said, I'll get something. So then, then, then I went back, and uh, not to her, but I went back to her husband that was next to her, and I raced out. He, I mean, he's crying. Tears are locking up under his chin. He's just crying and, and going on. And I reached over to him. I said, hey, uh, um, brother, uh, what can I pray for? <laughs> Pastor. Oh, 
think I wanted my wife to start listening to me. I said, hold on, brother. Go down and pray for somebody else. I said, <laughs> so I went down and prayed for somebody else. And uh, I'm like, Lord. And I said, I, gotta, I know I had to go back and pray for him, you know. So I'm like, oh, Lord, I got to get back over there. So I can't, you know. I'm like, maybe they go and sit down or something. Oh, Lord Jesus. <laughs> you know. Because they get ready to put me on the spot. You know what I'm saying? So I get back there. And once I get back there, I, I, right before I got back there, I heard the Lord says in Galatians 6. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. And so I went back and I said to the young lady, I said, I said ma'am, um, <laughs> whatever you soweth, that shall you reap. <laughs> she didn't look that way. You know, she still looks religious and, you know, saying, right? she, she didn't look that way. But that's where I was feeling. I said, I said, Whatever you read, whatever you sow, you read. Well, it come that time we're at the end of the broadcast. Yes, I apologize, man. I would love to keep going, but we can't. We don't have so much time here on the broadcast. But I'm excited that you tuned in. You don't have to stop here listening. You can call today and get the CD. Once again, it's a free offer to you. You call the number on the screen. Tell the operator it's about your heart. Tell them the day that you heard the broadcast on, and then they'll be able to send that out to you once again absolutely free no cost to you whatsoever we want to just bless you now i want to pray for you if you're not saved if you're not born again if jesus christ is not lord of your life today is your day to have that relationship with christ now i'm not talking about religion i'm talking about a relationship with the lord jesus christ if you know that you have never confessed jesus as lord of your life you never accepted him into your heart today is your day could you pray with me right now let's say this prayer together say heavenly father I ask you to forgive me of all my sins, known and unknown. I renounce them all. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I receive you now as Lord and Savior of my life. Amen. Well, if you said that prayer, you meant it with your whole heart. We have a disciple manual that we're going to send out to you. And then we're going to give you a CD as well. And then we also, too, is going to send you out some great, 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 great information that's going to change your life. CD, Daily Bread, and also, to a disciple manual. You're going to get all those things absolutely free. We want to bless you. Now, this is how you do that. You simply call. When you call in, you tell us, hey, I got saved. I got born again today. I gave Jesus Christ my heart. I want to, I want to like to get all that information that pastor talked about on the television. Go ahead and get it today. It's absolutely free. No cost to you. We're going to send it out to you postpaid. We want to bless you. We want you to be blessed as well. Now, encouraging you again to get the CD. Do not think that you just got it. The Bible simply says faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing by the word of God. The more we hear that, the more we grow in that area. It's all about the heart. Once again, I'm Pastor Dexter Easley thanking you for joining us today. Keep on in experiencing new life. It's all about the heart. God bless you. See you next time. Oh, man, I gave, Doc. It's supposed to show up. It's going to show up this week. I think I got to spin around three times. Let me do it. One, two, three. All right. Yeah, that's what, that's what he did. And now you won in a game and you don't got caught into a system. That has nothing to do with your heart. What good is you giving and your heart's all jacked up? Because it's going to be your heart is going to give the length or the depth of your growth of your seed. It brings the nutrients to your seed. And so if my heart is twisted, he says, before you give, purpose in your heart. F find out where your heart is all about the heart call now for a free cd of today's broadcast dial 1-866-910-LIFE that's 1-866-910-5433 dr easley would like you to have this free cd we are waiting for your call visit our website at newlifegcsc.org where you'll find more series by dr easley new life christian fellowship app take new life with you download the app Hear Dr. Dexter Easley's sermon. New Life Christian Fellowship Church app. We would like to invite you to connect with Dr. Easley on Twitter at Dr. Dexter Easley. On Facebook, facebook.com and LCF 
GCSC on YouTube, Dexter Easley Ministries, and visit our website at newlifegcsc.org. Stay connected. Friends, and welcome to another exciting edition of our Study of the Word broadcast with Apostle David Kaiser Jr. A Study of the Word is an evangelistic outreach of rightly dividing the Word Church of God, located in Mobile, Alabama. Stay tuned for the next 30 minutes as we take you live into the sanctuary with Apostle David Kaiser Jr. You be blessed. When you don't know what, who is more important? Y'all, God, amen. And so you could even pray a prayer. Uh, like this, Lord, I, I'm interested in this area. Uh, there's something in my spirit that says that there's a certain degree of success that awaits me uh, in this particular area and this particular understanding, Zumba. Y'all got it? And so I need to know somebody who knows Zumba. Because all I have is a desire now. Right? Y'all got it? Amen. And so what God will do when you get in pursuit, he'll put you into contact with somebody who knows Zumba. Y'all got it? And then you get in there and you take the process to the next level, right? And, uh, and one thing you have to not servant, servant means someone who was humble enough to be led. See, you can't go on the Zuma class somebody I already know. <laughs> you Zumbin, you that. And they that ain't Zumba. <laughs> right, that, right, you can't go in the class. Tell me, I got this. I got this. Let me show you. Let me show you. You're going to be zooming right on out the door. Right, y'all getting it? Right? So, so when God brings you into contact with who you need to know, you got to, you got to take a different posture. Right? You got to be grasshopper. Right? And you can't be telling sensei how to kick. Right? You got to be grasshopper. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Amen. And you'll be surprised how far your humility will get you. You get into just what I'm saying? Amen. You can't be jumping in and say, oh, but. No. You just hush and listen. You know, and, and, and most of the time what, what, what your uh, who going to do is start with the basics with you. And some, some people can't stand that. They, they can't be patient enough when, when the who start with the basics. They don't know what you know. Y'all got it? And, and if you're going to see what you don't realize is that when you meet the who, you become a representation of the who when you leave them. You're going to go and say, the who told me. Right? And so they want to make sure that when you leave their presence, you're going to be on the right path. Right? Exactly. You got it. So, so you got to go into those environments with a heart of humility. Y'all got it. Go in there ready to glean and to and to suck up everything that you can, you can get in that particular uh, uh, first encounter, right? Y'all got it? Dr. Mike Murdoch said in one of his books, the difference between a season is a person. Say that, the difference between a season is a person. In other words, the people that you allow to come into your life 
can change the season of your life depending on what they bring into your life. Y'all got, and that happens sometimes subconsciously and unaware to a person that ain't paying attention. Right? They allow people to come into their lives, and before before they recognize it and realize it, that person then changed the whole direction of their lives. They're going in a whole other direction that God never told them to go in because they allowed somebody to come into their life and change the season of their lives. You got to know when to tell folks, I'm not in that season. That's, I'm not in, that's not my season. You got it? Amen. And so... So we want to be careful, right? Uh, in Joshua 1 and 1, four individuals are mentioned. Moses is mentioned. The Lord was mentioned. Joshua was mentioned. And Nun, Joshua's father, was mentioned. Y'all got it? All of those individuals were instrumental in Joshua becoming a success. Y'all got it? Now, we know uh, that the Lord was the most important one, and we may talk about that in, in a few moments, you got it. But the Bible said Joshua uh, and Nun, Joshua, the son of Nun, right? And so what that tells me, and, and whenever you read scriptures and, and it starts talking about genealogy, uh, so-and-so begot so-and-so and so-and-so begot so-and-so. And so what it's saying is all of those individuals were instrumental in that, in that family tree. They made significant impact. Y'all, y'all got it to the next generation. And so here, because the Holy Ghost chose to give Joshua's father props, that means he must have raised him right. Y'all, y'all got that means he had a positive, uh, indelible impact uh, on Joshua's life. I believe that prepared him for Moses. Y'all, y'all got it. Because Moses wouldn't have just picked anybody. Right? He just wouldn't have picked nobody with their pants hanging down sad. Right? Because what you have to understand is, is, is Joshua was allowed in the inner circle. Now Moses leading two million people. You got him. But he picked Joshua to be in his inner circle. And, and frankly, size from sister, sister Moses, you couldn't get no closer to Moses than Joshua. Amen. Y'all, y'all see that? Amen. And so, 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 so that meant that that his father was 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 significant in his life. The Holy Ghost chose to to, to talk about him, right? Is is that all right? All right. And then, of course, in the Bible, it talks about uh, Moses, and it talks about. The Lord, and so my point is, in every stage of your life, uh, God has positioned certain people to help you to become a success, right? And you need to pray and ask God to help you uh, by way of the Holy Spirit to recognize them uh, when they show up. Y'all got it. In every stage of your life, God has positioned certain people to help you uh, to become a success in that stage that you're in. Uh, at that particular time. Y'all got it? And, and it's a golden opportunity. You know, I was, uh, oh man. I was considering a, a, a business venture, a venture, and uh, Sister Kyle and I, and I was, uh, I said, it's a golden opportunity. This is going to bless somebody. And as I was meditating on, you know, whether or not I should, you know, dive in on the on the next level. I turned the television on, man of God. I never saw him before in my life. And he said this. He said, a lifetime opportunity has to be taken advantage of during the lifetime of the opportunity. <laughs> Did y'all hear that? He said, a lifetime opportunity must be taken advantage of during the lifetime of the opportunity. Y'all got it? And then he said, because God will give you the right of first refusal. Y'all got it? See, 
If you don't take advantage of the opportunity, what he'll do, he'll give the opportunity to somebody else. But he will give you, he's given all and going to continue to give all of us the right of first refusal. That means he's going to give you the option to say yes or no to the opportunity. And I'm telling y'all, some of y'all in here, God, I've given multiple opportunities. And you, through abdication of making a decision, lost the right to first refusal. And so he said, God will give you the right to first, uh, to, uh, uh, first refusal. You know, the Bible said about two or three, we didn't that. And the Holy Ghost hit me three times in a row right quick. And then he said this. He said, if you don't grab a hold to an opportunity while it's passing by, it will pass you by. <laughs> It'll pass you by. You got it? And I said, oh, Lord, I, I hear you. I heard the voice of God. Even though it came through a vessel I never saw, never heard his voice. But when he spoke, I heard God speaking to me. And, and so I told my wife, you know, the Lord said, don't, don't let this opportunity pass by. And for me to take advantage of the opportunity during the lifetime of the opportunity because I have the right of first refusal. And I know it's first refusal because when it was presented to me, they said somebody else came up in their mind, but God spoke to them about me. Y'all right, right. got it? Amen. And so uh, my point, God have people stationed along the, every area of your life, every, every dispensation of your life, and you got to stay sensitive so you can, you can hear and recognize those people when they show up because they're there. Y'all got it? They are there. Amen? Now listen, some of these people you will have a relationship with. Some of them you won't. And, uh, you know, can I confess? That part right there used to bother me because I used to want to have a relationship with the people that I felt like could pour into my life. Am I helping anybody? And, and I found out that, you know, sometimes God will have people to pour into your life and, and, and you won't even be able to get close to them. You won't be able to get close to them, right? But you got to be able to recognize, though, even though I can't get as close as I want to, God using that person to speak to me and to minister into, into my life. Y'all got it? You know, I found out that, that you know, Successful people can only have so many people in their inner circle. So many, they, they, you know, that's just the way it is. You, you got it. It came to a point in time where, where the crowd, the people in the crowd couldn't get as close to Jesus without going through the inner circle. They had to find somebody in the inner circle and tell them to go in and ask Jesus could they have an audience. And people get... They can get a problem with that. You know, I just can't walk in past the door. I usually can walk in the church and just and just go in past the office. Well, well you know, sometimes you get to a point where you cannot, you can't do that no more. That don't mean pastor getting high-minded or looking down his nose. Got Alex out there. He's bigger than the door. You know, you can't get by. I said that, and Alex knew exactly what I meant, didn't you? I said that in a positive, that was, that was male affirmation. That's, that's what that was. It was well, you knew it. You knew it. You knew it, Denny. You knew it, Denny. You knew it. That was male affirmation. That was not a put down. So don't be rubbing on Alex Beck. Yeah, like, it's all right. It's all right. <laughs> <laughs> Pastor didn't mean it. He didn't mean it. He didn't mean it, Pastor. He didn't. He just say anything. <laughs> Lord have mercy. <laughs> he understood exactly. He's saying, yeah, Pastor. <laughs> yeah. No, I am. I ain't. That's all with it. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I know that's right. That was male affirmation. So, so listen, some people... <laughs> That's just this guy. She, she, she a loving person. 
it's, it, you know, sometimes you don't think I'm Miss Lovett. <laughs> but I am. I am. I had to defend myself because see in the truck I'd be getting it all with. I can't believe you said that. <laughs> I can't believe you said that. And I'm like, the boy all right, I'm telling you. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Where am I? We was a far off or so close. Yeah. All right, so some of them you have these people, the who's in your life. Some of them will have, uh, you have a relationship with and some of them you won't. And, and that's important because perhaps some of you were like me thinking that anybody that God uses to, 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 to bless your life or to give you instructions as it relates to being successful, you always have a relationship with them. You got it. And that's not always the case. And you can't be offended about that. Y'all got it. Uh, listen, some of them will be saved. And some of them won't. Y'all got it? Because one of the things God has had to do, you know, over the years is drop certain biblical wisdom in ungodly vessels. Y'all got it? Because perhaps it may not have been anybody in the kingdom that was ready for it. You got it? I believe he does that quite often in, in the area of science and in medicine and, 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 and inventions and all of that kind of stuff. Y'all, y'all got, because a lot of times, you know, the world will be wiser than the children of, 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 of God because they're always after something, trying to find out something, trying to, I wonder what's down there in that hole. Right, it's dark down there, it's deep down there, throw a rock in there, don't want to hear it hit bottom. I think we ought to go down there, right? <laughs> I'm like, no, 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 right? But somebody going down there, and they're going to find out, they're going to come back, they're going to do a documentary, and they're going to tell you what's down there. The third person, okay, <laughs> going to do the documentary. But, but, but listen, sometimes they'll be saved, and sometimes they won't be saved, right? And you got to be all right with that. You know, sometimes God will teach you some things through an un- unsaved vessel. See? If you know the word, though, you know where they're getting off. Right? But don't not get what you need. Y'all, y'all got it? Amen. Somebody say, get what you need. And I got this in here. Please understand this. They will not be there to do the work that only you are supposed to do in order to make you a success. Y'all, y'all got it? Because some people have that mentality. They think when, when the who show up, they're supposed to do all the work. You got it to make you a success. And who is saying, listen, I've already done that work once. I ain't even do it no more. Right, this is how I did it. And this is what you need to do. And I'll come back and I'll check on you to see whether or not you are doing it correctly. But I'm not going to do it for you. Y'all got it, and and you'll be surprised. The more they see you uh, uh, invest yourself, the more they'll be willing to communicate to you. And every now and then they might put their hand in it too and help you do this or to, or to do that. You got it, but you got to invest yourself in your own success. Somebody say it. I have to invest myself in my own success. That was pretty good, right? So Joshua had his father to pour into his life. He had Moses to pour into his life. And he had the Lord to pour into his life. And, of course, the Lord uh, was the most important one of the three. And he will always be the most important person uh, that we need to have to pour into our lives. You got it? Uh, You have to be careful about, and I'm closing, about success. Go to Deuteronomy Deuteronomy 8, I think in 18, or is it 18 and 8? Let's see. And uh, because what the enemy will try to do when you become successful, 
I think it's 8 and 18. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He'll try to, he'll try to cause you. And I know this kind of stuff never enters your mind, you know, that when I get stable, when I become successful, that I'm going to forget about God. I'm going to forget about the things of God. And um, sometimes success can cause you to become so focused on your success because being focused is one of the principles that breeds success, right? A diligent man shall abound with blessings, the Bible says. And so what that means is that when you get after something, you, you focus in on it. you all in. You're not half in. You got it. Amen. You got a direction to your life. You won't be deterred, you know. And so, and, and you got to have that, but you have to be careful that you don't allow that to get out of control. Because you can get so focused on your success or being successful until you forget about God. And, and forgetting about God is not, I just, I just forgot about God. His importance in your life begins to, to you will begin to wane. Is that is a good way to say that? Yeah, he's not first place no more in your in your life. You you got and that's that's, that's real subtle, subtle. Yeah, y'all got it. But the enemy has used that and he continues to use that on those who are not aware of his tactics, right? Deuteronomy eight and what? And eighteen He says, but thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, man. God knows the end from the beginning. Right? I don't care how they say, Lord, Lord we ain't going to never, and I know that's bad, we ain't going to never forget about the Lord. Well, if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, where would I be? Yeah, yeah. Y'all, y'all got, it. and people confess that they testify that they say all that kind of stuff, but as soon, sometimes, if they get to that place of stability, and they got it clicking, they got it going on, man, they start forgetting about the law. They never denied that they were the children of God. Y'all got, it. but in their actions, God said, "You don't forgot about me." You forgot about me. When you were making minimum wage, I couldn't beat you to church. Now, God was first place in your, in your life. Now they want to take it up to $15 an hour. Ain't the Lord good? That ain't no money. Yeah, not, not from the perspective of what you want out of life. That's what I'm saying. I'm not saying don't be grateful, you know, but I'm just, yeah, right. That, you know, $15 now, you, you, you know. And, and, and God said, look, I don't look down through time. And, and I decided to warn them about something that he knew they were going to do. Hmm? Verse 18, this is why I am. It says, but thou shalt remember the law, thy God. For it is he, oh, Lord. Now, remembering the Lord don't mean I remember the Lord. No, that means you get on up, you come to the house of God, you, right, you invest yourself in the things of God, in the kingdom of God, in the house of God. Uh, 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 yeah, that's, that's what he, that, that don't mean you remember the Lord, you stop paying your tithe. And you believe in God for more. Right? But he said, Thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is what? Lord, have mercy. That what? That giveth thee the power. You know, see, success will never be by your own might and by your own power. Right. If, if you acquire any degree of success, it's going to be because God gave you the power. That's why I say, I don't understand that. You know, God will give you the power to go to the job. 
And he won't give you power to come to church. Right, right. Yeah, you have forgot about God. And I'm going to tell you, the way that happens, the more you put God back like that, the easier it becomes to do. The easier it becomes to do. You know, and you need to quit using me as an excuse. Pastor don't know, I'm tired. You probably were tired when you went to work this morning, but you went. Mm, and work. And God gave you the power to do that. Right? But we'll talk ourselves into, but he ain't got no more strength. God ain't got no more power left. When I clock out, the power done turned off. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Yeah. Okay. Say, is he to give thee the power to get wealth, right? That he may establish his covenant, which he swear unto thy fathers, as it is this day. Y'all got it? So, so a part of your wealth is to help establish God's covenant. You know, in the earth. I, I'm creating a, a, um, a post-cross prayer for you guys. And I'm going to put it to, to some music to it, and you can, we're going to record it if you want it. Amen. You can play it in your, you know, just to get post-prayer praying in you. Believe, thanking God for all the things he's made available for you in Christ Jesus. Y'all got it. And at the end of that prayer, as I was kind of wrapping it up the other day, the Lord, and I put in there about believing for all of these things that God, the manifestation of all of these things that God has said he's already given up in Christ Jesus. And the Holy Ghost had me to put in there. Uh, oh, hi, I'm Co-Pastor Ann Cosby, right in the Bible, the Word Church, and we would like to invite you to our 2017 Sisters We Must Stand Women's Conference, which will be held right here in the beautiful city of Orange Beach, Alabama, at the Career Resorts. So I would like to take this time to invite you to come. The dates are September 14th through the 16th, 2017. That's right, so be sure to come and join us. The ladies at Rightly are already making preparation just for you to have a wonderful time in the Lord, fellowshipping with other sisters in the Lord. So stay tuned, and our announcer will give you some pics from last year. So be blessed. Ladies, it's that time again. Time for the Sisters We Must Stand Women's Conference 2017. This year's conference will be held once again at the beautiful Carib the Resort in Orange Beach, Alabama. We invite you to come join us September the 14th through the 16th at the Carib for our wonderful time in praise, worship, and fellowship. We will have five dynamic speakers that are seeking a word just for you, woman of God. So grab your family and your friends and reserve your condo now. To register for your conference seat, call 251-433-0121 or contact your rightly representative. To receive your conference discount, you must register by August 20th. Sisters, we must stand 2017. See you there. have just been blessed by studying the word broadcast with apostle david kaiser jr if you would like an audio or video copy of today's message please email us at rdtwtvpros at gmail.com connect with us daily on facebook twitter youtube or ustream to catch past shows words of encouragement special events or join us live in the sanctuary we're located at 760 Ermira street in mobile alabama our service times are Sunday school at 9.30 a.m., Sunday morning worship at 11 o'clock, and Tuesday night Bible study at 7 p.m. Join us at this same time next week for a study in the Word broadcast with Apostle David Kaiser, Jr. You be blessed. Life Television Network, Chickasaw, Mobile, Preacher.
Well, friend, I'm telling you, I know after last week you want to tune in and you're tuning in for part two. I want to take you right into the service where God is moving by this, his spirit. Don't touch that dial because I'm telling you, miracles, signs, and wonders took place. A lump disappeared in the service. We had so many moves of God in one place. Thank you, Pastor Alan Robinson and the pastors of your district. Now, y'all excuse my dress. Happy New Year. But guess what? You know, it's cold from where I am. But I made it to the studio. I got my hair had turned over backwards because I know, my, I know some of you are going to frown because I got my Steelers hat. But, hey, guess what? I'm a fan of Mike Tomlin, so don't get upset. I, I am a Raven. I am a Raven, Baltimore Ravens. And being from Texas, I am a Cowboy. So I got multiple teams. I got multiple teams that I enjoy. But I want to take you into this service and give me a call, 1-800-478-4225. 1-800-478-4225. This is yours truly, Doc Warren, saying get ready for a move of God. Come on, worship him. Come on, if you're a child of God, worship him. I'm a candidate for a miracle. I'm a candidate for a miracle. I'm a candidate for a miracle. Hallelujah. I hear the Lord saying, quit trying to do it yourself. Quit trying to do it yourself. Quit trying to do it yourself, young lady. Quit trying to do it yourself. Quit trying to stand yourself, pastors. Preachers, quit trying to do it yourself. God said, that's why I got, that's why you have me here. That's what I'm for. Today, God spoke this word to me. He said, man, he said, folks are trying to do it themselves. They're trying to do ministry themselves. Hey, Tabo! The effects of fervent prayers of a righteous man avail of much. We're too busy trying to pray for stuff. See, God didn't give us prayer to get money and stuff. I just don't believe that. I just, I just don't believe that prayer is a mechanism or something that God gave us just to get money and stuff. I just, I'm not saying it can't happen and God don't want us to pray, but I'm saying that God didn't give us prayer. Because if that's all that prayer could do, young lady, why does the atheist that don't believe in God get cars and money and college degrees? Why is it, sis? It's something more than prayer. Because if you read the book of Mark, when it talks about prayer, it talks about the heathen's prayer. It talks about the hypocrite prayers. Some of them think they're going to get stuff for their repetition. Repeating themselves. Hey, talk about boy. The effects your fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Prayer should bring you closer to God. Prayer should be something that causes you to connect because prayer is a form of communication, like you communicate with your husband or your wife. That's what prayer is. That's how you know your wife. That's how you know your husband. Because of that communication. And we don't communicate with God enough. We're trying to figure it out ourselves. We have become so educated, so intellectual that we have quit depending on God. And we're making a mess. That's why this country is in trouble. And it will continue to be in trouble with homosexuality and passing all these laws, these diabolic laws. Same-sex marriages. I love you, Jesus. I love you. I worship and just want to tell you, Lord, that I love you more than anything. Don't sing it if you don't mean it. Oh, I love you, Jesus.
hands up towards heaven. Lift your hands up towards heaven. Lift your hands. Worship the Lord. Come on, worship God. Don't let it just be a song. Listen what you're saying. Listen what you're saying. That should be a prayer. You said you could tell him the Lord you love him more. One more time, listen to the words. I love, I love Jesus. I worship you. What you gonna say? Just wanna tell you. Lord. ask the question in here is there anybody that's sick in your body today don't make a sickness but if you're sick in your body I want you to wave your hand if you're sick in your body wave your hand wave your hand if you're sick in your body wave your hand if you're sick in your body if you got a pain in your body you got a pain in your body wave your hand I want you to come down here shoulder to shoulder come real quick come around this way now come around this way come around this way Come quick. Come around this way. Come around that way. Listen to me. Listen to me. Come around this way. Come around this way. Shoulder to shoulder. Shoulder to shoulder. Step a couple of steps forward. A couple of steps forward. Shoulder to shoulder. Listen to me. Is there anybody else that's sick in your body? Don't wait. Listen to me. Don't you wait. Until you see the manifestation of people being healed. But come now. If you got a pain in your body. If you got a sickness. If you got a headache. Broken leg. Broken foot. I believe God. Now some of you that's listening. You can call us right now with a prayer request. I don't know who's listening. What's that phone number? 404 627 4462710030 You can call us right now. Call us right now. Hallelujah, Jesus. We're looking for God to heal. We we expect a God right there. Just right there. Not not no 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 right there. Right over there. Amen. Right there. Shoulder to shoulder. Somebody just stand behind them. I'm getting ready to pray. Just stand behind them. Uh, is there somebody else coming? Now listen to me. If you're coming, come now. If you're coming for a miracle, if you need a miracle, come now. Don't wait. What you need God to do for you, young lady? What you say? My neck has been in pain all day. Your neck is, squeeze my hand. Your neck has been in pain how long? Since you woke up, squeeze my hand. Your neck has been what? You sure? You sure? Move it. Y'all can't clap no better than that. Fire, 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 fire. What you need God to do for you, sis? What's wrong with you? You've been having migraine headaches? Migraine headaches? You got one now? Huh? You got a migraine right now? You had one? Squeeze my hand. What about that blood condition? Close your eyes. What I mean, sometimes migraines is a cause. Anybody's in the nursing field? Wave your hand if you're in the nursing. Sometimes migraine could be caused by a deficiency, right? Am I right? Y'all help me out. Now, I don't, I'm not a doctor. You in the nursing? You go to school for nursing or you in nursing? You go, how to going to school for nursing. Come here. Sometimes when people change their diet, it can help. Right? Squeeze my hand. Some things that you have... Have you always had migraines? 
You just start having it? Hallelujah. Some things that you desire. Have you been under stress lately? I know you have. Somebody say that's general. See, sometimes we want something so bad. And when it don't happen, it affects us, affects us emotionally. Hallelujah. Even certain hurts. Things you didn't expect for it to turn out. Lift your hands up towards heaven. Towards heaven. Close your eyes. Quit trying to do it yourself. That experience is not a negative experience. It's an experience of another chapter in your life. Fire, Close your eyes. You can either become bitter or better. Oh, shot. Y'all quiet up in here. Fire! Don't dwell with the attitude of anybody that somebody did me wrong. Let the prophet talk. Turn it over to God. And we know that all things work together. I rebuke these migraines. And I pray that there's a release of distress. I command it to disappear. Now open your mouth and shout. That's it. Release it. Release it right now. That's it. Release it. Really. That's it. Let the tears flow. Don't hold back the tears. It's not the time to try to be strong. Get it out of your system. Some of y'all get it out of your system. Get it out of your system. You will be you will not be productive if you don't get it out. God's got an assignment over your life. Hallelujah. What's wrong with you, sis? What you need God to do for you? You got severe what? Come on, stand. I need a brother. Amen. I know some of you brothers say, I don't like to catch sisters, but sometimes y'all brothers got to catch sisters. Y'all catch me. I don't want none of these mothers to hurt themselves. You said what? And both your legs? You a member of this church? Squeeze my hand. You got, you had pain? You do? You do? You sure? What? Somebody move out of the way. Y'all better be good. Amen. She may run that way. I move. Y'all better take my. I know what I'm talking about. That's what I'm telling y'all to move. Somebody. Ah! Give us some room. Give us some room. Let her go. Let her go. Let her go. Move out of the way. Hey, shot out of the heart. Hey! Yeah, yeah. Folks want to dance. Y'all got to shift it. Sis, you supposed to have arthritis in both your legs. My God. You supposed to have arthritis. You said your leg was hurting? What's going on? What's happening? Thank you. Folks looking at me funny. What's going on with your leg? Something going on with your knees? Something going on with your knees? Something going on with your knees? Something, what? Come on, you gotta, come on, what? You better stop. What you doing? You got to offer. Huh? Hey, hey! My God, my God. Grab somebody by the hand and tell them if you need a miracle, you better learn how to praise God when the praise starts going on. Tell them the prophet don't have to touch you. Just learn how to praise God for somebody else's miracle. Hey, good God from Zion. Hey! What you need God to do for you, young lady? 
Since the age of 27. Says that y'all got to watch me, y'all watch, watch, y'all got to watch me at all times, cause sometimes I touch folks while I'm talking. Watch me, please. I almost touch you. Ah, la ba shande hike. You said since the age of twenty, so you got a, you got a migraine right now. You had one when you was coming up here. Throw your hands up right now. Say, did, were you here Sunday? Something happens to you Sunday, right? What happened to you Sunday? You have to get, happened in your tongue. You got to get the tongue. Something happened in your tongue? Yes. Yes. Happened in your tongue? I was talking to the Lord. In what? In tongue. Sure? Positive. You sure? Positive. Still there? Yes. Fire! Come on, shout out. Come on. Loose that tongue and speak it. Loose that tongue and speak it. Now, the... Talk in that language. Don't you be talking about hallelujah. You better move your lips and talk in that language. Lips and talk. Fire! That's a few years in my brain. Why are you not talking? Talk. Talk. Move your lips and talk. Keep on moving your lips. Why are you not talking? Somebody else, we get ready. What you need God to do for you, sis? Huh? You have a what? What? Shoo. Shoo. Disappear. Y'all ain't saying the quiet. Y'all better praise him. Folks watching y'all on the counter, they wonder what y'all doing. What you need God to do for you? What you need God to do for you? What's wrong with you? Did something just happen? Huh? Did something just happen? Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you, God. Fire! Fight! Somebody else, we're almost out of here. What you need God to do for you? Squeeze my hand right now. Close your eyes. Yes, God. I pray for stability, balance, that equilibrium. You better praise him. You better praise him. Let me ask the question in here. Don't check it yet. Who in here had a knot in who have a knot in their body somewhere? Whether it's a lump in the breast, a lump anywhere, wave your hand. You got it a knot somewhere? Not, wave your hand. I see one. Is somebody else? Amen. You got a knot? Where? Somebody else? Somebody else? Hallelujah, Jesus. Mother right there? Amen. Check. I see him. I see him. I can see. Oh, you okay? The prophet sees. Amen. Thank you, God. Oh, Shandale. You got, you got a knot? You can feel it? Feel for it. Touch it. What? Ha! What? You got a knife? Check it. Check it. What? Where's the knot? Oh, I feel.
feel the anointing. You, you're trying to find it. You can't find it. She's still trying to look for it. She's still looking for it in your office. She's still looking for it in your office. But you better praise him, daughter. You better praise him. <laughs> Keith, I don't know if your camera can turn around. You, I see you're feeling for it. I see you're feeling for it. What's going on, sis? What? What? somebody by the hand and tell them quit trying to do it yourself come on open your mouth and tell somebody quit trying to do it yourself quit trying to bless yourself quit trying to deliver yourself quit trying to set yourself free call on Jesus and watch him do it Excited enough for me. Hey, Shabbat. I don't know why y'all don't get excited. Get excited like your pastor. Give it to God. Give it to him. Give him every problem. Give him every heartache. Give him every situation. God is able.
Praise the Lord, friend. I know this is yours truly, Dr. Warren, back, and I know you enjoyed that service. Now, if you would like to get this DVD, we don't do CDs, but DVD, you can write me and put a $12 seed offering or anything above to P.O. Box 724, Upper Marlboro, Maryland, 20773. The number should be on the screen. The address should be on the screen. Or you can call me 1-800-478-4225. Happy New Year. I hope you're enjoying your time of celebration, having a good time in this new year. And uh, this is a good year. This is a good year to serve the Lord. This is a good year. Any year is a good year to serve the Lord. And we thank you. And we say Happy New Year because it is a new year. Whether it's 2013, whether we're going over to 2014, 2015, if you're alive, we want to let you know that this is a good new year. And I'm quite sure you enjoy this message. Now, give me a call. Some of you that want to give a donation, put it in the mail, P.O. Box 724, uh, Upper Marlboro, Maryland, 20773. You can call me at 1-800-478-4325. 1-800-478-4225. Uh, Fred, you can put that on the screen. And I'm moving fast. Y'all see my leather coat. So, you know, it's hot, getting hot, getting hot where I am. Uh, but it's been cold. But I thank you for tuning in. And I love you with the love of Jesus. And quit trying to do it yourself because God's got you covered. See you next week. If you would like to learn more about Robbie Warren Ministries or to find out when Dr. Robbie Warren will be ministering in your area, visit our website at www.robbiewarrenministries.org or you can email us at rwministry at netscape.net. You're tuned in to Life Television Network. Bringing you nothing but the best in anointed teaching, preaching, and gospel music. Hi, my name is Pastor Wayne Johnson, and we're here today, we're doing a teaching on the infilling or the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And I just want to welcome you to a word, a great teaching that we're going to expound and go into some scripture and kind of lay out a foundation that God want to reveal himself to us in a different way. And we're here in Walnut Hill where our church is, Emmanuel's Faith Center, and I just want, I want to say thanks for joining us today, and, and I'm excited about what God is doing in these last days. So let's dig into the Word of God. And so our foundational scriptures are, are going to be 1 Corinthians chapter 12. We're going to start there, and also after that, we're going to go into um, uh, Acts chapter 2 on the day of Pentecost when the church came, and also we're going to go also in Isaiah 28 verses 11 and 12 and then John 7 and 38, and then we'll end up in uh, Psalms 103, verse 1 through 5. We, we may go a little bit different from those, but these are the foundational scriptures, and you can go back and you can look at them also. You know. And so here we are today, we're talking about the infilling of the Spirit. And so in the beginning, God you know, gave us his word, and chapter 12 of 1 Corinthians talking about the, the gifts of the Spirit. You know. And so I'm going to read uh, probably maybe down to the first 13 verses, and in, and in between that, I may stop and talk a little bit. And so here, here we go. 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 12, verse 1. Not concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I will not have you ignorant. Ye know that you were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols, even as you were led. Wherefore, I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calls Jesus a curse, and that no man can say that Jesus is Lord but by what? The Holy Ghost. Now, there are diversities of gifts but the same Spirit. There are differences of administration, but the same Lord. There are diversities of operation, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. And so 
I want to break there. So a manifestation of the Holy Spirit or the gifts of the Spirit. When we come into that place and the Spirit of God start moving, it's going to profit you. It's going to bless you. It's going to empower you to do some things and break some things and destroy some yokes in your life. So, so when we come to that place and we see the Spirit of God manifesting through prophecy, anytime the gifts of the Spirit in operation, we benefit. You know? And so, so, so here today, when we know that and we start looking for the plan and the perfect will of God to come forth in our life, it's just been a great blessing. Verse 8. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge, by the same Spirit, and to by the same Spirit is important. And so it's not three Holy Spirits, it's only what? One Spirit. And so we, as we understand that, it's only one Spirit, but yet still omnipresent, um, all-knowing God. And, and so he can do, he can, he's multitasking millions of things all at the same time because what? He, he is the great and almighty God. And verse 9, to another faith by the same spirit, and to another the gifts of healing by the same spirit, and to another the working of miracles, uh, to another working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, to another interpretation of tongues. And so I ask you a question. So if God can fill me with the spirit that I pray in tongues, which is one of the gifts of the spirit that's, that's listed here in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, so why shouldn't all the other gifts be allowed to be in the church, glory be to God, or be a uh, manifestation come. Because verse, verse 1 said, now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. And so he said, he told us to desire these gifts, to crave these gifts, to pray and ask God for the gifts to be alive in the church, glory be to God. And so when we do that, we release our faith in the ability that when we pray that we know that our Heavenly Father has what hurt us. And so when we go to Matthew chapter 6, he's talking about the Lord's Prayer. And when we pray in secret, our Father who sees in secret will reward us what openly. And so we see that, 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 that the Lord's Prayer is a very powerful prayer when you go in and you see it. Now you begin to pray from that standpoint of understanding that when we ask God for something, he's not trying to withhold anything from us because we are his seed. We are, the, we are his children. We are the seed of Abraham. And so God wants to empower us to be a blessing to our generation. Because when people are blessed by the gifts and by the power of the Holy Spirit, what's, what, what's, what's the results of it? They want to run toward God. They want to release and give their lives to Christ, glory be to God, that they can live what the abundant life that God what already promised his children. But then I, I begin to ask the question, why is it not given? Why is it so that, we, that some gifts are harder to walk in than others? And, and so that's my prayer to God, that, that the eyes of our understanding will become open, that we can understand how to receive the blessing of God. Salvation and, and receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost, you know, and so, so power is in the blessings of the Lord. And so anytime the Lord told me he would profit me and increase me and bless me, glory to God, that means there's power in his word to do exactly what he said. And so my job is to believe what I read not rationalize it, not try to say what if, or, and, and not understanding the full measure of what he's trying to relate to the church. And, and, and so when we put that if in there and we disqualify ourselves as being a recipient or, or the receiving the blessing of God, it calls us to stumble and fall. Glory be to God. Does that make sense? And so here today that we know that it's the self-same spirit, one spirit. And, 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 and so we have so many Spirits that's trying to gain access to our lives, but they don't, but they are disembodied spirits. They're not what here legally, so therefore they're trying to gain access to our lives and to all that we have, you know. And so we, we, we disfranchise ourselves. We, we, we push them aside in the mighty name of Jesus. Glory be to God. And so hereby we know that, that we have access with God because it, it's by the Holy Spirit. It's only one. 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 One, one, one. one. And so here we are. Let me go back to verse 11. But all these work of that one and self same spirit, divided to every man severally as he will. And they call him in the Greek, Allos Paracletus. I, I guess I'm pronouncing that right, you know. And so he's our advocate. He's our helper. He's our standby. He's our intercessor. And, jo and John was said this when, when he had his earthly ministry. He said, there's one standing among you now shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. So Jesus Baptizer, it's the baptizer in the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit comes to give us 
utterance and unctions in the spirit. So when he comes upon us, he comes to what fill this, this temple or this void on the inside. And the Bible said, out of our belly shall for what rivers of living water. And so this process is given by faith when you want Jesus to come into your life and let him be Lord of your life. And as you surrender and as you pray and ask God for his blessing to come into your life, he won't withhold none of these gifts because they're gifts. And if I have a gift, if I want to give you a gift, it's up to you to receive the gift. See, the gift giver is always given, but, but the person that received the gift, he has option. He can what, choose to receive it or reject it. And so a lot of times, and so sometimes we, we, somebody give us a nice gift. Oh, you didn't have to do that. Oh, I, I didn't think I was worthy enough to receive the gift. But, but God's opinion of us is that we are what? We're, 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 we're highly favored. And he, he put us on a pedestal because what? Jesus died and suffered and went through so many things on the cross that we can receive the blessings or the gifts or the power and enter into a rest in this time and season that we live in in our life. And so the Bible said we're not destroyed because of the devil. We're destroyed because of the lack of knowledge and insight into his word, Hosea 4 and 6. And so the time that we spend in this word, understanding and receiving and believing God and trusting him. See, patience means when you got to have patience. You know, I, you know, I didn't really understand patience. Patience is when you're standing on God's word and something is trying to move you off the foundation of his word that you're standing on. You need patience or endurance to keep the same mindset and believe God and trust him through that what pressure time that the enemy is placing on your life to move you off your foundation of faith. And so praying in the spirit strengthen us in these weak moments that we are going through in life. That's why we need to be what filled with the spirit, praying in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah to Jesus, because you know you're in conflict, you're in a spiritual warfare, you're in a spiritual battle. And as God has gifted the church with one of the greatest gifts that we can, if we do not break down. If we begin to understand that God has given us a weapon of warfare with our tongue by praying in the Holy Ghost, glory to God. Many people fight us on this thing a bit of the, of the infilling of the baptism of the Holy Ghost, but it's a spiritual weapon. It's a weapon that God has given to the church. But if we don't understand how to use our weapons, we go into battle with what with carnal weapons against a spiritual enemy, and we are sometimes defeated, glory be to God. But when we understand that the baptism of the Holy Ghost is, is spiritual, is kingdom, is, is binding by God's word that he gives us a spiritual language, that we have the power to communicate with our Heavenly Father, and we speak in an angelic tongue as well. The Bible says, though we speak with the tongue of men and of angels, angels and have not what charity that's why the enemy knows that if we are the strong man and we have power in the name of Jesus glory be to God oh Lord have mercy glory be to God see because it's by one spirit and so let, let me let me let me break off and talk about the strong man part because this is vitally important to what we understand so God created Adam from the dust of the ground correct all right so he blew his life or his zoe or his life created in the image of God. And God gave him power and dominion over all the works of his hand. So basically you say Adam was the God of this world. Does that make sense? Do you agree with me on that concept? And so here we are now, you know, Satan rebels against God, kicked out of heaven, him and the third of the angel. And so he finds himself in the earth where Adam is what? The strong man or have what? He's the God of this world, Adam with dominion and power and authority. So Satan has no, he lost his place. So now he subdued the serpent and what gets in the serpent and goes to Eve. But yet still, he plotted probably a long time on how he would get what he wanted from Adam. And so here you are, he goes, talks to Eve and, and said, has God said? So he began to put doubt in her mind about what God said because hallelujah, glory be to God. Does that make sense? And so here he is, he tricks her. And Adam is not deceived, but he willfully give his dominion and power and authority over to Satan. And now Satan becomes the God of what? This world. Glory to God. He becomes the strong man. And so here we are, Adam, strong man first, transferred to Satan. And now Jesus Christ come. They call him the last Adam. Oh, you don't hear me. Glory be to God. And God fills him with or baptize him in the spirit of the river of Jordan. And the Holy Spirit comes upon him. And God makes a decree. This is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Hear ye him. 
And so for a long time as I was a preacher, I thought he was just speaking to the people that were at the baptism. But no, he was speaking to all the creation that he made. And he was telling them, he was telling the rocks, he was telling the wave, the sea, the wind, the fig tree, sickness and disease, Satan and every angel and everything that he ever made. Glory be to God. He was telling them and making a decree to them that the, these things that had, that, 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 that they understood the voice of God. And he was saying and making a decree, this is my beloved son and whom I'm well pleased, hear ye him. And so when he made that decree, everything had to obey the creator. Glory be to God. And so we see sickness had to obey. We see demons. We see fig trees. We see everything that physically Jesus spoke to. Physically, hallelujah, glory be to God. Physical things that he spoke to, hallelujah. Human things that he spoke to. Environmental things that he spoke to. Everything that he spoke to. Even death, when he spoke to death, death had to obey him. And so therefore God's decree and God's word was so found, so profound that what all creation had to obey him. And that's why God give us these things, what we call working or flowing in the realm of the spirit. And so much carnality has entered into the church. Hallelujah, glory to God. We need to return back to the foundation that God has said, hallelujah, glory to God. Uh, does that make sense? And so here we are today. We are understanding that the baptism of the Holy Ghost is spiritual. It's a pure language. It's not defiled like our language. It, when you pray in the spirit, it's no, it's no cursing in that language because it's a pure language given by God to his people. So every other earthly language that man has a part in, it has curse word. It has things that you can say that, that's, that's not a pure language, glory to God. So rambo korabaka. And so therefore God's language is given by the spirit. And when we pray in it, it profits me. It blesses me. But yet and still, sometimes because the mind does not what understand what's going on and it's trying to figure out and trying to understand, so we form an opinion about what God is trying to do in my life, and therefore sometimes it, it, it interferes and hinders the blessings or the flow of God in my life. Does that make sense? And so God is saying in verse 11, going back to 1 Corinthians uh, uh, chapter 12, verse 11, he said, but all these work of that what one and self-same spirit divide into every man severally as he will. So these things are divided unto us by what? The Holy Spirit. And so if the Holy Spirit is, is the one that gives and, and imparts these gifts, so who should I ask? I should ask him about what doing the impossible in my life. And so here we are today, you know, we, we, we just got into a short version of this, of this message, but we're going to have part two, part three, and, and maybe part four going into it. Stay tuned for part two of the infilling of the Holy Ghost and praying in the Spirit with the Emmanuel's Faith Center, and I'm Pastor Wayne Johnson. My name is Pastor Wayne Johnson. Welcome to the sec second segment of our teaching, the infilling of the Holy Ghost and the baptism or praying in the Spirit. And so we're excited today to take you into the, the, the second part of it where we begin to talk about the principles of God's Word, empowering us to do what we can't do. Because when we understand who we are and we know that God is with us, we make a decree on the promises and the prophetic Word that the Holy Spirit is the one that what comes to energize or stir up the gifts of the spirit and we talked about in the last segment we talk about that we are the strong men and so if you do not understand this principle about being the strong man so when attacks of the enemy come you you'll start looking at yourself as the weaker one rather than what the strong man and so when we go there and we, we look at Matthew chapter 12, I believe that that's, that's where that comes from, glory be to God. When we look at, at the principles of God's word, that we are the strong men and women of God. And so now the enemy, Satan, Jesus operated on the, the law. And so from Genesis to, to, to John was the law. And after the resurrection, after he rose again, then that's when we, we, we go back when he rose again in 40 days of teaching to the disciples. And he told them to go and tarry to Jerusalem till you be endued with power from on high. 
And so when Satan found out that we all going to be millions and billions of people being filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, the same spirit that, 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 that rose, that, that pulled Jesus and, and, and rose and, and brought him back to life, hallelujah, when he was in that dead state, glory be to God, that same Holy Spirit now is inside of us, empowering us, giving us the, the, the wisdom, the strength, and the knowledge and the ability to do exactly what Jesus did. Lord have mercy to Jesus. Do, oh, does that make sense? So when we understand this principle, we got to understand who we are. So now my concept is that if I am less than Satan, well then, therefore, sometimes my thinking is I cannot overpower someone that's stronger than me. It's like a bully. Most people that bully you, they, are, they think they have strong, they, 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 the contents of their character, it, it, it makes you what feel less than. But Lord, have mercy to Jesus. Let, let me go back, because I want to lay this down to you. The scripture said, how can you enter into a strong man's house and bind him except you be what stronger than him? I'm paraphrasing, glory to God. And so therefore, Jesus Christ became what? The strong man. Everything that God made obeyed the voice of Jesus Christ. Because, Lord have mercy. Ooh, I feel good today. Lord have mercy. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. And, and, and so when we go to uh, Matthew chapter 12 and starting at verse 9, when he departed hence, he went into the synagogue, and behold, there was a man which had what, a withered hand. And he asked him, saying, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath days that they might what, accuse him? And he said unto them, What man shall there be among you that have one shepherd, one sheep, and if he fall into a pit on the Sabbath day, will he not lay hold on it and lift it out? How much more then, how much more then is a man better than a sheep? Wherefore is it lawful to do what well on the Sabbath day? Then said the man, Stretch forth thy hand, and he stretched it forth, and it was what restored whole like unto what to the other. Then the Pharisees went out and held counsel against him how they might destroy him. But when Jesus knew it, he withdrew himself from thence, and what a great multitude what followed him, and he healed them all. Now, in this context, later on down, we see where 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 they they uh, they talked about in verse twenty eight. He said, "But this is what they said." And uh, let me go. Let me go right here. Let me go to verse twenty four. But when the Pharisees heard it, they said, "This fellow doeth not cast out devils, but by Beelzebub, the prince of devils." And Jesus knew their what thoughts. Now, let me show you something. That's very important when you're reading scripture. He said he knew their thoughts. So whatever thing you are thinking about, whatever thing you let have access in your thought life, it dominates the, 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 the place and the place that you're trying to go in life. Because your thoughts reveal what, what's really on the inside. Glory be to God. Because the scriptures say, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. So here we are. Jesus knows our thoughts, even the words we're going to say before we even say them. Glory be to God. So this is vitally important when you, when you go there. And he said unto them, every kingdom divided against itself is brought to what? Desolation. So when you become the strong man, and we became the strong man when Jesus rose from the dead on the third day with all power and glory in his hand. Now the thing switch. Now the enemy is trying to spoil our house, trying to get us not to see that we are the strong men and women that God has anointed with his spirit and with his power. Glory be to God. We have been restored back to that rightful place when God walked with Adam in the cool of the day. Uh, does that make sense? Do you, do, do you feel me? Do, do you begin to understand? Now, when I get that concept and that concept is inside of me, then my, 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 my imagine, my image of myself now turns to what God said rather than what I feel and what I sense, glory be to God. Does that make sense? Because see, when you're sensing wrong, perception and truth are totally two different things. You can perceive something to be true, and it's not true. See, because most people live from a place of perception. What they think determines where they go in life, glory be to God. And, and perception can be wrong and not what related to truth with God's word. So when you think that you can't do anything, let, let me break it down like this. Sometimes when Christians say his name and, and they make that decree out of their mouth, something from down here rises up and resists that which is coming out of their mouth. And, and I, can, I can give you an illustration if you follow me. If you make this decree right here, you say, I'll never be broke another day in my life. 
And when you make that decree and you begin to say that out of your mouth, instantly with a lot, with, a, with 99% of the people that say that, you'll feel something from your lower belly or your inner man rise up and resist that word that just came out of your mouth. That's a faith confession. That's what God said. My barrel and barrel will never go empty. I'll never be broke another day in my life. God will supply and sustain me in every area of my life. When you make those faith confessions, then that thing comes up and rises up against you to what? Reject what just came out of your mouth. That's your core belief. That's what you really believe. And that's why the Word of God tells us to renew our mind. And, and when we renew our mind with the Word, it, it, it delinquishes that voice. And that voice no longer rises up against us when we're starting to decree God's Word. And therefore, a lot of people, when they say the name and they make a decree about Satan, and, and so therefore that thing rises up inside of them, and, 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 and sometimes they get afraid. But I want to let you know today, God's Word is true. You've got to settle that in your mind. If it's true and, and the weapon that He's given, in us is is the sword of the spirit is the gifts of the spirit or the holy spirit coming to live on the inside of us manifesting himself through us in a lot of ways by praying in the spirit and delivering and that we speak mysteries unto god that we are created in the image of god and we walk and we do kingdom blessings and kingdom work we communicate with a pure language unto god and therefore that language of the spirit is given it's, it, it's a blessing it's a gift of god and so therefore when my heavenly father has given Gifted me with something, I cherish it with, with 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 unconditional gloves, our hands of gloves, glory be to God. Because I understand that He's given me something, and sometimes you can receive something from your father or from our, and you don't even realize the value of what we have, glory to God. And so here we are today, and Jesus is what fighting against demonic powers. Through men, because the scriptures say our battle is not against flesh and blood, but against principality and powers and rulers of darkness and spiritual wickedness and high places. So now, let's go back to Matthew 12. And let me begin to explain about this what position of authority and dominion that God has given us. And now we are what the strong men. So we talked about earlier the old covenant from Genesis to John, right? And Jesus operated under the old covenant when he was here. And the New Testament came, what, after he died and rose the third day with all power and glory in his hand. Glory be to God. So therefore, now he came back, 40 days of teaching to the disciples. And after that, they all met 500 brethren. And he said, go and tear in Jerusalem till you be endued with what? Power from on high. Glory be to God. And so here we are. Jesus is setting a principle in his word, and he's showing us something if we can what, see this. And listen to what he said. And they, and they were saying some things about Jesus, and the Bible said he what, knew their thoughts in verse 25. And every kingdom, and said unto them, every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and every city or house divided against itself shall what, not stand. And the Bible says, that's, that's powerful within itself. I'm going to come back to it. And if Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. How then shall his kingdom stand? So we pray the Lord's prayer, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is, is in heaven. So here we are, kingdom principles are coming to the church through by what mysteries are praying in the spirit. So God said, we speak mysteries unto God. I pray with the spirit, I pray with the understanding. I sing with the spirit, I sing with the understanding. So though we speak with the tongue of men and of angels and have not charity, it what profit us nothing. So here we are that we have an opportunity to what see into the kingdom. Lord, have mercy to Jesus. The mysteries of the kingdom are now revealed unto the children of God when we know and go after kingdom blessings and kingdom principles. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That when, when I know who I am in Christ, when I know that God has given me power and authority to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing and no wise shall what hurt or harm us. That's what God said. And so now we, 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 we know that, that, that thou kingdom come, thou will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now, hold on. I'm going to show you something. Listen to what it said. And, and verse 26, I read that. And, and verse 27, if I, he said, if I by Beelzebub cast out devils, by whom do your children cast them out? Therefore, they shall be your judges. Verse 28, listen to this. But if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God is come unto you. We pray that Lord's Prayer all the time. 
Jesus said, if I'm casting out devils by what? The finger of God, the kingdom of God has come unto you. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So we pray that all the time. Glory be to God. And listen at verse 29. Or else how can one enter into a enter into a strong man's house and spoil his good, except he first bind the strong man, then he will what, spoil his house. Glory to God. So we are the people that God called and commissioned us to do. And that's why praying in the spirit is so vitally important. It's a weapon that God has given to the church. So when you go to Ephesians chapter 6, he talks about putting on the whole arm of God. But at the last part, he said, praying always with all prayer in the spirit, you know, petition and supplication unto God, that we speak what mysteries unto God. So when you pray in the spirit, the spirit of God, hallelujah, God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. So, so the gifts of the spirit are the power of the Holy Spirit. This has been the Emmanuel's Faith Center broadcast with Pastor Wayne Johnson. If this broadcast was a blessing to you, we would like for you to partner with us. You can partner with us with the monthly seed of $25. We are located at 9501 Highway 97, Walnut Hill, Florida. For this and other teachings by Pastor Johnson, please visit our website at www.efcenter.org. Tune in next week for another exciting time in the Word of God. And may God continue to richly bless your lives is our prayer. Life Television Network, Chickasaw, Mobile, Pritchard. My name is Sister Mildred Williamson, and I'm a member of the Word of Life Church. Uh, Dr. Henry W. Roberts is, our, is my pastor. And I wanted to give my testimony concerning about my surgery that I had on September the 6th, 2017. I was admitted in the hospital. I came to church uh, first, and uh, Pastor Robert prayed for me. And uh, God healed me at that time, but I didn't know that I would heal, but God knew it. And, I, and they, they, I still had my surgery to do. And um, so when I was admitted in the hospital, they uh, operated on me and they took uh, uh, a foot of my colon out. Uh, and, I, and, I, and God, I was so happy to, God had healed me uh, because, oh boy. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for doing it, Lord. I just thank you, Lord. I just can't hardly tell it. I'm so full, I don't know what to do because God did a miracle for me. Because the doctor, when I was laying in the hospital room, the doctor told me he was cancer. And, I, and, and my children was very upset about it. And I said, but God, but God. I said, God going to take care of this thing. I don't care what it is. I'm going to trust God. And I came back to church, and I sat on the bench, and I said, God, you're going to fix this thing for me. And God did it. God healed me. And when I had my surgery, I came out. They found no cancer in my body. I was totally healed of that condition. And I think and I praise God for God healing me. I thank and praise God for all the saints that prayed. I thank and praise God for all the people that came out. It was, it was, uh, the, uh, a lot of the members came out. I thank and praise God for my physician, D Dusty Franklin Smith, MD, at, at Mo Mobile and Palmer. I thank and praise God for Dr. Hannon. I thank and praise God for all the saints. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God for, for them praying for me. I thank and praise God for my pastor praying for me. I thank and praise God for the saints that came out to the hospital, bought me things, and helped me and blessed me. I thank and praise God for Sister, Sister Matthew, 
Sister Stallworth, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Sister Gully, praise God. For all them being by my side when a time I really needed somebody. Because it really looked like it was really bad, but I knew God was on my side and he was going to bring me out. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. I Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Y'all just don't know how happy I am. I'm so happy in Jesus because I'm healed. I'm healed by his stripes. God did it for me. And I give the testimony that the day that I am healed by his stripes. All the saints of God, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for praying. Thank you for my pastor. I'm asking everybody in Mobile, if you know God, if you sick and you got cancer, come out the world of life and let Pastor Robert lay hands on you so you can be healed. You can be delivered and set free, God, in the name of Jesus. Because his prayers, his prayers will answer your prayer, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I thank you right now that I am healed by the blood of the Lamb. Thanks for sharing your testimony. If you would like to share your testimony via video, you can meet with Brother Tony Austin here at the church to do so. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. <laughs> Recently involved in an accident or fall and experiencing pain, we're open four days a week, some days 7.30 to 7.30. Call me at 476-PAIN. One call, that's all, to me, chiropractor Dr. James Gordon of the Alabama Injury and Pain Clinic. The choice is yours. Bam, it's all about change. Stay tuned for a life-changing word. God been talking to us that we need to stick to it. And I know uh, most of the time we don't want to hear messages like that because that means we got to make some changes in our life. But one thing I know about to get to a next level and to live victorious, it must be some changes made. Somebody say, I got to make some changes. Don't be looking for who ain't here. God is talking to me and you. He said, it's time for the believers to stick to it. This is a generation that don't stick to nothing. I mean, this generation is so, they wear their sleeves, they fill it on their sleeve, and if you say something out of order, they take their ball and their bat and they go home. But I'm here to tell you, God is ready to raise up some disciples. He's ready to raise up warriors. He's ready to raise up victorious people. I didn't come for about five or six of you. I know some of you still think it's a showtime, but this ain't Apollo. This is God's time, and God is ready to use me and you. Somebody say, use me, Lord. Hit your name, Max, and say, what do you stick to? And who do you stick to? I'm not going to be able to go over the whole message. That's why we're going to give you a bonus package. Two CDs for $5. Part one and part two. And it's called Stick To It. And any believer that got good, sanctified, common sense need that CD. Need them in your car. Need them in your home. Need them for we can get developed in our spirit, man. Because the enemy is after us to quit. He love a quitting believer. He love a believer talk one talk in the presence of a great cloud of witnesses and then go home and can't even walk out what you talked about. I know it, I know it. He love that we are strong. We put on the strong faith when we got a whole lot of people around us. But what happened when you're by yourself and I'm by myself? Do you still say, devil, get back? I'm going to win. I got the victory. You ain't going to have my family. You you can't have my marriage. You can't have my finance. It's more than a song. It's called a believer stick to itness. One thing I thank God for my mama that's in this great house and my dad, if he was here, they taught me how to stick to it. See, most people think you just wake up one morning and you're going to stick to it. Not if you've been around a whole quitting, a whole people don't do nothing but quit. They're going to 
going to show you how to quit. They're going to show you how to throw the towel in. They're going to show you to say, I'm out of here. I don't want to fool with that. That's a coward way. Will the real church rise up in power? Will the real church begin to say, devil, you are lying. Jesus is the Messiah. No weapon formed against me. My family shall prosper. And I'm going to stick to it. See, it sounds like you're mad with somebody. I am. I'm mad with the enemy because I see what he do to the believer. He have you throw your marriage away. Then he have you throw your cheering away. Then he have you to throw your education away. Then he have you. And then we go around and get before people and say, everything is, oh, I'm just blessed of the Lord. How you blessed and you done gave away your family? Somebody says, stick to it with your quitting self. I tell pastor, I hate to see a weak man. A weak man make me want to go over and slap them. If anybody ought to stand up, it's a man of God. Telling me to pray. What about you to pray? Daniel was a man when he prayed. He prayed three times a day. Come on now. Somebody say quit quitting. Go with me. I want to pick up right where we left off with Esther. Somebody say quit all that quitting. Come on, stick to it. Power is in seeds. Do you hear me? You got to get anointing from somebody that got one that knows how to stick to it. Running around your old crazy friend, and then she ain't stuck to the marriage, she ain't stuck to her education, she ain't stuck to her job, and you talking about anointing me. You need to get back around somebody that got a real anointing that been proven by God. Not only did my mama teach me and my daddy, Jesus taught me how to stick to it. Every little thing didn't trip him up. Every trap they set, it never caused him to end his destiny. He said when he got ready, it was finished. Other than that, he said, oh, you become my enemy? Come on, see, Jesus talked a good talk and walked it. When are we going to start talking it and walking it? Oh, don't let the mic, don't, don't mess up. That's, I heard the enemy try to come in and make the circuit break. Somebody said it won't work. Well, go with me to Ruth. I told you, I can't, I, I, I can't take you back to all the lamentations that we said we was going to stick with God. And then we said in 1 Corinthians, we was addicted to the ministry. Some of us need to stick to ministry. In and out. You've been in every ministry in the church. Honey, can I tell you a secret? It ain't people. Everybody in those ministries is not messing with you. Is you don't have no stick to itness, and you don't have no people skills. See, my ba- baby boy, he used to tell me all the time, "Mom, I can't work with sons." I said, "Well, you ain't a kingdom worker." Cause see, when you're a kingdom worker, you can work with Godzilla if God puts you there. Cause I got stick to it and the power from God. See, that's what's wrong. We want to work with people with the same personality and all that little foolishness. But if you're going to grow, you got to get with somebody that's going to rub you the wrong way. But you can go home and pray and say, God, give me strength to deal with this. Ain't nothing wrong with, ain't nothing wrong with the church. It is a quitter. And a quitter never wins. Is that true? Somebody say it out loud. I can't quit no more. Come on, you you got to say it because everybody knows what's wrong with you. They just ain't had the balls to tell you. They didn't have the guts to tell you. But since God sent me and gave me the microphone, he said I could be as bold as a lion and said, tell the truth in love that the people will grow up. That's why we haven't grown up. Well, nobody tell us the truth. Yeah, we're going to take our anointing and our gifts and go play in another man's field. Go play. Are you at 
said Ruth 1. Ruth and Naomi. Ooh, it's been preached so many ways, but when God showed me this, he said, come on now, Ruth, stay with Naomi in her roughest time. Woman ain't had nothing. She had lost everything. Her husband lost her children. And then she went from Moaz, which means wash pot. Ain't too much going on there. But then Ruth said, let's go up to Bethlehem, Judah. Well, that means the house of bread. Let me pick this up with you because you're looking at me like I owe you something. But I just come to tell you, number one thing to stick to it in this will cause somebody to take notice of you. Don't you miss that? I told you Ruth 1. I just paraphrased one, Ruth 1. Let's go to Ruth 2. Stick to it in this will cause someone, somebody said, to take notice of me. One of the translations that King James said, it would take knowledge of me. But the Amplified said to take notice, notice of me. Somebody would be looking at me because they saw last year when they came to the church. And then the year before I came, they came to the church. And the year before then they came to the church. And they said, is that the same woman that I saw that was still in this ministry? I want to take notice of her because I want her to come sing in my comfort. I see she got some stick to it in it. Is that the same preacher that I saw that was serving? I want to give him an invitation to come do a workshop at my Route 2 and 10. Then she fell on her face and bowed herself to the ground and said unto him, why have I found grace? She's talking to Boaz. Why have I found grace in thy eyes that thou shouldest take notice of me? And sin, I am a stranger. Now let me pray. Sin, I am a stranger. Is that it? But listen to this. Boaz had a field full of fine workers. But Ruth got there. They was all trying to get to Boaz because they already know he was a rich man. But here come Ruth on the scene, working, and he looks up. But you know why she got that kind of favor? Because she stuck to Naomi. See, favor will follow you from one relationship to another one. So when she got there, Boaz forgot about all them other girls. He started acting, who is that dancer? <laughs> oh, I, I believe he started sweating like a man do when they see a pretty woman. <sighs> How can I get next to her? And then the Bible said he took notice. Now you know, just one glance at a stranger means that God had orchestrated this favor for her. So somebody say, my stick to itness would get me notice. Oh, come on, give God a hand to pray. You, you might not believe it right now. I remember one time I was sticking to an assignment at a conference. And the other people had been there longer than me. Lisa was with me that time, but they had been there. You know, we was the new kid on the block. But because we had the power to stick to it. Now, they supposed to have been working a conference, and they was over there just playing and eating and talking and whatever, and we over there working like a bull for somebody else's conference. And all of a sudden, I said, Pastor Lisa, God got his eye on us. He was taking notice of us. Soon as we got through, God begins to open up doors for us because God loves a person that got a mind to stick to it. See, when we don't stick to things, it makes the kingdom look bad. People be like, what happened to, didn't she say she was there with you till God called her home? And then 
they gone. Don't get bored because I want to tell you this other thing. Look at Ruth 2 and 12. Somebody says, stick to itness will get me noticed. I, I don't believe you believe that. Ruth 2 and 12. Not only will sticking to what God done assigned us to do get us noticed, but it'll bring us in a full reward. I'm going to book it right here. Ruth 2 and 12. And the Lord recompensed. This is Boaz still talking to Ruth. He said, the Lord going to repay you, girl. For thy work and a full reward will be given of thee, of Israel under whose wing thou hast come to trust. Somebody say, payday is coming. Now, this is what Boaz did. He started looking around. He said, everybody been hearing about you, Ruth. How you took care of your mother-in-law when she didn't have nothing. And now you going to work and leaving your mother-in-law at home? Because Ruth told Naomi, don't you do nothing. I got this. But because she stopped with Naomi, listen to this. She was even instructed how to get the rich man. Who can you stick with that give you instructions that you will follow to get your rich man? Who will you stick to to give you instruction that you get a breakthrough in your marriage? Who will you stick to? See, I, 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 I know this ain't going to relate to you because this generation has went back to the 60s. It's my thing. You can't tell me who to sock it to. They don't want to hear the wisdom of the wise men and women that have stuck to thing, got the victory of a thing, got the manifestation of the thing, got the... I'm just going to do it my way. Okay, keep on doing it your way. But I found out when I find somebody got wisdom, they can accelerate my way. Don't you miss that? They can accelerate my way. When it took them 10 years, it'll take me three years to get the manifestation. Somebody says stick to it. <laughs> okay. Go with me right down a little further to Ruth. I ain't got but three little points to hit. I said that you and I, once we stick to something, it's going to bring us in what? Y'all didn't even get it? A recompense and a full reward. Wait, let me go back. Recompense, number one, is going to bring you into what? Thank you, baby. Somebody's listening. Because if you shout it out, holler it out, and don't get impartation, you'll never see the manifestation of what's being preached. I told you this wasn't entertainment. This is a classroom setting for how you're learning. Number one, if I stick to something, somebody going to soon notice me. My work and labor is not in vain, sugar, sugar. And yours either. So number one, smart class, what stick to it and it's going to get? Somebody going to notice me. And then young ladies and young men, that's why you got to put your best face forward every time. Don't let them notice you and you ain't been kept. Number two, what it's going to do? It's going to give me a recompense of reward. I mean, it's payback time. I've been laboring, and you've 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 been laboring, and the devil is talking about, it's your hardest time. No, you need to tell him, it's my hardest time. See, he's been talking head, Lisa. I know he's been talking to me, but I can see clearly now the rain is gone. <laughs> Hallelujah. I can see in the scripture how Ruth labored with Naomi so long till the girl did finally get into her harvest. It was a hard time for them, but God done brought them into their harvest time. And he used the man Boaz, which means kinsman's redeemer. 
Boaz was a type of Christ, honey. You can read Boaz all you want, but every time I look, I see Christ redeeming me. I see Christ noticing me. I see Christ going to give me a full reward. Somebody say, keep laboring. Come on, give God a hand to pray. It ain't your hardest time. Come on, say it. It ain't my hardest time. You looking hard, but it ain't hard. It is your harvest time. It is manifestation time. It is preparation time. It is the manifestation of what you and I have been praying about. And if somebody, some prophet don't come, we'll still think we're in our hardest time. Somebody say, I'm moving. Go with me one more. I got one more. Stick to it. And it's Ruth 2 and 16. God, this is good to me and you in the Holy Ghost. Because one thing about it is we can't just run through scriptures and not see what God is saying. Are you at Ruth 2 and 16? Now this what, that, that I'm telling you, that Boaz, that's where I was going, Pastor Derek. You're going to help me preach it. Thank you. Okay. You know, I don't mind a little system because God gets the glory. All I want to do is tell the story about and for we can get some manifestation in our lives. But look at this. I love how Boaz, which is what? A type of Christ. Boaz is the kinsman redeemer. The type of Christ. He, Christ, this was Boaz said, girl, I'm going to get you noticed if you stick to it. Type of Christ said, you know what? I'm going to recompense you and get you a payday. You're going to get a full reward. See, 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 you can't rush this. This filet mignon here, honey. It got to get in our spirit, man. This is not where you go get some pigs in a blanket and throw in your mouth and then you need a pickle and then you need an olive. That's called ap appetizer. Nobody wants an appetizer as long as you've been working for God. I know I don't. I need a filet mignon. I need a full meal. I need a recompense. I need him to reward me and I need my payback. Somebody say, I got to have my payback. I've been through too much not to get paid back. And I didn't stop and I didn't start. And some of you done stopped and start. God said, that's all right. Just get back on track. See, I love about God. He don't penalize us. I love how pastors say, he, may, he ain't going to put us, he going to put us not in the back of the line, but he going to put us back in line. Oh, you ought to hear this good news here. This here is ready for TBN, and you ain't even ready for it. This kind of preaching here will bring people to the fullness of the Godhead. It'll help conform them into the image of his dear son. Because Jesus stuck to it. Jesus stuck to it. And if Jesus did it, I can do it. One business and fail, so what? Pick up another one. Stick to it. One marriage that went up under the water, I can't help that nut did not know your self-worth. Go get another one. I ain't going to stop, I ain't going to stop. Somebody say it with me. I ain't going to stop, I ain't going to stop. Hey, 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 I ain't going to stop, I ain't going to stop. Hey, I ain't gonna stop, I ain't gonna stop. Somebody's trying to convince you to stop. I ain't gonna stop, I ain't gonna stop. Come on, come on, come on, come on. I ain't gonna stop, I ain't gonna stop. You know, shame would try to get you to stop. Somebody knew something on you. You last house got repossessed. Stop. I don't care who come and who leave. I ain't gonna stop. I ain't gonna stop. Jesus is with me. 
he promised to never leave me, never to forsake me. He will be me to the end of the day. Ain't gonna stop, ain't gonna stop. I'm unstoppable. Somebody say I'm unstoppable. You better, you better I'm get that in you. I'm unstoppable. I'm unstoppable. Somebody get God a hand to pray. Come on. If this don't get you back where you supposed to be, call me because I need to get somebody to bury you. There's a resurrection power that is being released. What me and you couldn't do for ourselves, the Holy Ghost has come to quicken us. And he said, because I said you could be unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. So who told you to stop? Who told you to quit? Get back up and believe again. Somebody give God a hand to pray. Hallelujah. Let me hit this last. Y'all sit right over there and get some of this. I ain't going to stop. Too legit to quit. Somebody say, I'm too legit to quit. I'm like a time ex -wife. I Can't you take a... And keep on... And when you really graduate, he'll get your Rolex. But you can take a... I keep on... See, the only thing wrong is our mind has been talked to by the enemy. And my job and the Holy Ghost's job is to hit you upside the head and say, you can't stop and you won't stop till you finish what God has told you to do. Come on, come on, you ought to be cheering. You ought to be cheering if it ain't nothing but for yourself. Because some of you, if you tell the truth, you're on your last leg. Ruth, God, I hear you. The power of sticking to it. It looks good on the believer. Quit make the body of Christ look bad. So I come to help prop you up. In Jesus' name. There's room for you here at Christ Center Church. Join us on Sunday mornings for discipleship training class at 9 o'clock a.m., followed by Miracles Corporate Prayer at 10 o'clock and a morning worship experience like none other at 10.30 a.m. And then come in for a midweek refueling on Wednesday with Miracles Corporate Prayer at 6.30 p.m., followed by Empowering Disciples Bible Study at 7 o'clock p.m. Pastor and Apostle Ashley would love to see you here at Christ Center Church, 6808 Jefferson Page Road in Shreveport. Another life-changing message from Apostle Brenda Ashley. For more information, find us on the web at www.ChristCenterChurch.org. You're tuned in to Life Television Network, your number one Christian station. Give your child the education they need at Word of Life Life Institute Christian School. We have a full-scale educational program serving grades K-1 through K-12. We utilize an acceleration Christian education curriculum that allows your child to achieve attainable educational goals at his or her own pace. Openings are available, so call now at 251-456-2652. Life Institute Christian School, because our children are our future. 
Word of Life Learning Institute is more than just a daycare. We specialize in the overall development of your child. We utilize an accelerated Christian education curriculum that teaches your children the basics they need for a strong academic future. We provide nursery through K-5 after school care and before and after school transportation. For more information, call 251-456-2650. Word of Life Learning Institute for learning and caring. We're glad you could join us today for the Concepts of Faith broadcast. This program is dedicated to teach you how to put the Word of God to work so that it will make a positive difference in the everyday circumstances of your life. And now, here's Charles Caps. Now we're talking about tribulation or rapture. And we're finding out that in the, the scriptures that Jesus taught and uh, uh, the, the Apostle Paul taught, that the rapture of the church takes place before the tribulation. And I know that there's a lot of people that will fight you for the right to tribulate. You know, I've never understood that. <laughs> I've never understood that. Why anybody will want to tribulate, but it's because they have misunderstood the scriptures. Now, let, we've dealt with, uh, with Matthew 24. Now, let's go back over to Thessalonians. Second Thessalonians, where the Apostle Paul gives us two things that must happen before the second advent. Now, when the Apostle Paul gives you this insight and says these things will happen, you can, you can mark it down because the Apostle Paul was given this revelation by the Lord Jesus Christ himself. He said, what I teach, I didn't learn it of man, neither was I taught it, but by revelation of Jesus Christ. Now, when we get over, we, we've already dealt in the other session with the, the uh, uh, First Thessalonians. Now, let's come over to Second Thessalonians, and let me uh, qualify some of the things I'm about to say because it'll help you understand it better. Paul wrote this second epistle to the church at Thessalonica to try to straighten out some things that had evidently, someone had evidently written a, a letter, and... Uh, forged Paul's name to it and said something to the effect that I, Paul, have changed my mind and the day of the Lord, the day of Christ, is at hand. In other words, the rapture's already taken place or not going to be one, and, and the second advent is upon us. And Paul is writing this to the Thessalonians to try to straighten this out. Now, notice what he does. In the first chapter, he deals first with the second advent. Let's pick up on it in uh, uh, verse 6. Seeing it is a righteous thing for God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you, and to you who are troubled rest with us when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, taking vengeance upon them that know not God and obey not the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power, when he shall come to be glorified in his saints and to be admired in all of them that believe because our testimony among you was believed in that day. Now you'll recognize